When Kate Kane, the Batwoman, goes undercover in Arkham Tower, will she be able to uncover their dark secrets, or will they eat her alive first? Well, let's hop into the pages of Detective Comics number 1048, a continuation of Shadows of the Bat, and find out together, shall we? So then, as we found out in the last issue, this is going to be one of those stories that jumps around in time a lot. In fact, we jump all the way back to see the origins of one young Tobias Ware before he became the doctor in charge of Arkham Tower. It seems that young Toby had become acquainted to mental illness at an early age, his mother being prone to violent and sometimes deadly outbursts. It was after one of his mother's outbursts that a young Tobias first met a social worker by the name of Harriet London, a kind and caring woman who swore that she would make sure that Toby had a bed for the night, but more on this story later on. From there, we cut on over to Dr. Ware's office just a couple weeks into the grand opening of Arkham Tower. He's interviewing a brand new doctor, a woman by the name of Lisa Frau. Naturally, we as the reader know this is Kate Kane in disguise trying to get closer to the powers that be behind Arkham Tower, and personally, I like the idea that Batwoman has her own Matches Malone persona she can dig into. Once again, a lot of the particulars about Dr. Ware just don't seem to add up. He's clearly an accredited doctor, it's just he doesn't have any of his diplomas on the wall like most normally do. He talks a big game about miracle breakthroughs involving new therapy types and cutting-edge medication, but Kate can't get him to actually say what they are yet. He does, however, open up a little bit and say to Kate that he got into this business mostly because of his mother and the fact that he was saved by Gotham Social Services as a child, and now he wants to repay all that goodwill. After all, were it just a couple years later, it would be more than likely that Ware's own mother would have found herself locked up in a place like the old Arkham Asylum. This is why Ware has gone out of his way to to try and make the place feel like a comfortable, state-of-the-art hospital and not some grim, gothic dungeon like the old asylum used to be. This includes letting AAA supervillains like Mr. Freeze walk around with everyone else like he was just a normal patient. Even Batwoman has to agree that Mr. Freeze is seeming good, better than good. Actually, he seems genuinely sane. A far cry from the person who multiple times before tried to bring Gotham City to its knees. Then again, this is Mr. Freeze we're talking about here, and he's not crazy in the same way the other Batman villains are crazy. In fact, I usually thought that they sent him to Arkham because it was the only place that could give him the care he needed, what with the whole Sub-Zero suit thing. Freeze isn't the only celebrity villain walking around like this was a day in the park. There's Anna Volson, the scissor-themed serial killer who we discover was actually put away the first time by Batwoman originally. Why they even imply that Volson, crazy like a fox, is actually able to see through Batwoman's disguise, not with her eyes, but with her nose, actually. Yeah. I guess Batwoman has a signature scent. I wonder what it is. Lilacs and black leather, maybe? The strangest inmate in the new Arkham Tower, though, might actually be Harley Quinn. No, not that Harley Quinn who we know who has actively redeemed herself and is more of an anti-hero in line with her popular TV show. No, I mean another crazy woman who says that she's Harley Quinn and who just so happens to dress and act like the Suicide Squad New 52 version of Harley. Which, oh my god, did they actually do it? did they actually take a page out of the Sean Gordon Murphy book and just totally split the difference between these two different Harleys. I mean, it's a good idea, but it's one that's going to be needlessly complicated moving forward. Ware continues to show Kane around the hospital, and we learn that his main goal for opening Arkham Tower is to make it so successful at turning people's lives around that one day they'll be able to work with regularly old mentally ill people and not just the supervillains set in Gotham. Of course, that's still a ways off and is ultimately being being overseen by Dr. Chase Meridian, a doctor and ally of the Bat family. She's trying to help crack the mystery of Arkham Tower in her own way. And wouldn't you know it, she's also running into her own set of interference from Ware himself. In fact, there's another doctor, Dr. Ocean, the guy who's actually in charge of getting the brand new psychiatric medication. Apparently, no one can find him. Batwoman reconvenes with Oracle and the rest of the Bat family in the sewers of Gotham, where Batman had set up his last Bat cave before his departure. They all agree that if they want to get to the bottom of who exactly is pushing these brand new pharmaceutical drugs in these streets of Gotham, then they're going to have to go and find Dr. Ocean themselves. Now, as the comic comes to an end, we check back on in with the origin story of Dr. Ware. We discover that he had actually stolen the bank card of the social worker and ran off on his own instead of going to a group home. Furthermore, despite him talking a big game about loving his mother and wanting to see her cure 
nerd of her affliction, it turns out he actually hates the mentally ill. Ed hopes to see them all destroyed as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Detective Comics number 1048, everybody. And overall, I continue to be invested in this new Mariko Tamaki story. It's very different than a lot of the other Batman books we've been getting. Mainly, I think it's the structure. I dig the whole Pulp Fiction moving around in time to help make better narrative points in your story. Case in point, Dr. Ware died in the first part of this story, and yet his origins and the groundwork that was laid for Arkham Tower have clearly been decades in the making. There also seems to be a real light being shone here on Gotham essential services, especially the social services of Gotham City and how they can fail and succeed plenty of different people. We see it in Ware's story, and we also see it in the backup stories with young Nero. I guess the idea is, is not everyone gets to be as lucky as Dick Grayson or Tim Drake and get adopted by Batman, right? It's one of those there but for the grace go I type of stories and I always really respond to those. Overall, I'd give this one another 7.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye